all dogs come from wolves. But over the course of a few hundred years, we have created extreme looks that would never have evolved naturally. And with this, genes linked to diseases have been locked into our best friend's DNA. In dog breeds, as we have been selecting for the traits and the behaviors that we wanted, uh, we have, of course, enriched for those genes that give us the positive sides of, of what we want. But also there have been hidden genes traveling along with that so that you don't really see them until you have randomly enriched for it in a breed and then certain diseases can become very common. I think that we ska prata lite med Matten Spana och stämma av att hon verkar frisk men vi kanske också ska ta lite RNA rör. Vad tror du? Vi kan ta lite RNA rör så vi kan titta på hur generna är uttryckta. Kerstin Lindblad Toe wants to find the genes that make dogs sick to make people healthy. When you are looking for genetic mutations in humans, you need a lot of patients and a lot of healthy persons because the spectrum of mutations are so complicated. When we are looking in dogs, the disease mutations have often become common and so it's much easier to find them with a smaller number of dogs so we can use only a few hundred dogs. We'll get back to how Sherston's research can help people. But first, let us take a closer look at what has happened to dogs' DNA. All life on Earth changes over time. Natural selection favors traits that are beneficial for the survival of species, while genes linked to poorer health are usually weeded out, avoiding large impact on the species. But when man takes command, natural selection is taken out of the loop. And in several dog breeds, as a result, disease-causing genes have instead been kept in the DNA and become more common. Dogs, just like people, get a lot of different diseases. They can get cancer or diabetes or heart disease. And because we have bred dogs in different breeds to have different traits, such as morphology or behavior, we have enriched for some of the disease genes as well, so that in different dog breeds you have different diseases. So, då var det Susanna och Spana. Hej Spana. Hej. Ja, du är duktig. Vad du kan. And the Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever breed is affected to a greater extent by SLE. In both dogs and humans, the disease causes the immune system to periodically attack joints and organs. In Sweden, about 400 people fall ill every year to this, mostly women. The symptoms vary. There can be severe pain in the joints and muscles, one day in the hands, while another day in the knees. Paralyzing fatigue, difficulty breathing, or fever. So it can be quite hard to diagnose SLE because the symptoms are so different and so varied, and that suggests that it's a complex disease. And as a complex disease, it's also likely that there are many different genetic risk factors. It is not one gene and one disease, it's multiple risk factors in different combinations that can give rise to the complex disease. Is this a good assembly? Yeah, I think the quality is uh, very good. So, då ska du få sitta upp, Spana. And with the help of this dog, Spana, and other tollers, Sherston Lindblad Toe wants to find all of the SLE genes. That Sherston Lindblad Toe would choose medical research is no coincidence. She wants to help others, just as she herself received help. If it wasn't for modern medicine, I would not be alive today. Sherston was born with a heart defect. The doctors could not repair it, and they did not know if she would survive. But over time, the technologies to replace the vessels that I didn't have has become better and better, and I've had very much a normal life. Thanks to spare parts from a pig's heart, 
Sherston was able to do things that her doctor never thought she would be capable of doing. As I was sick and staying in hospital, I used to do jigsaw puzzles. It was one of the few things that you could do there, but it was also fun. And that means that when I do research now, it's almost like doing a puzzle. And so I'm fortunate enough to do a puzzle that I find interesting, but also with the hope that it will be useful for other people, including help, helping them with overcoming disease. By comparing the genome of Tollers with the disease SLE and Tollers without the disease, Sherston Lindblad Toe has found five regions that differ. Within them are genes linked to the immune system and genes with unknown functions. Taking this information, we have moved to the human genome and looked in sick and healthy people. And what we find are mutations in similar genes in humans as the ones in the dog. Some of the genetic differences in SLE patients affect the body's T cells. T cells are part of the immune system. They are trained to recognize viruses and bacteria and then kill them. But here, something goes wrong when they are formed they lose the ability to recognize the body's own cells and become overactive. This means that they both respond too strongly and to the wrong things, such as the lungs, kidneys, skin, and brain. It's important to find all the, the different genetic risk factors for a disease because that teaches you about the biology. And there are different treatment options out there today but they are not necessarily working on all patients. And for some patients, you need much better treatment options that maybe correlate with the genetic mutations that they have. So by learning about the biology, we could then start thinking about better treatment. Då är vi färdiga. Mm. Bra. Vad duktig hon var. It's time for Spana to go home. And the blood test she provided can hopefully help both tollers and people in the future. Behöver vara frisk. Alla behöver vara frisk, även om man är hundar eller människor, så är det samma sak. <laughs>